So in the previous lesson, I showed you guys how to use, how to factorize difference of squares. In this lesson, I'm gonna take it one step further and we're gonna do ones that have higher powers. So in the previous lesson, we typically had things like 20, uh, x squared minus 25, but now we're gonna start looking at things like x to the power of eight minus 25, for example. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So here's our first example. So remember, for something to be factored as a difference of square, you need three steps in place. We need three things to be satisfied. Number one, you need two terms. Okay, that's correct. We do have two terms. You need them to be separated with a negative. Okay, yes, that's correct. And then each term must be a perfect square. And remember, we're literally talking about a square. So 9r4, well, if each side is 3r squared, then if you had to work, if you had to get the area, that would be 9r to the power of four. So what they mean is, can this be broken down into a square? Yes, each side would have to be three r squared. And then a square of 16 would be a four and a four. And if you had to get the area, that would be 16. That is literally why we call it a perfect square. Whereas the number 20 is not a perfect square because you can't find any two numbers that are the same that would make 20. Yeah, you could say five times four, but that's not a square, that's a rectangle. And we're not talking about perfect rectangles, we're talking about perfect squares. Okay, so what we do is we um, we put a plus in the one and a minus in the other, and then you just go put those side lengths of the squares like that, done. Okay, here's our next one. Now this, these numbers are not perfect squares, but remember, the first step of any factorizing is to always take out a common factor, nice. Okay, so the common factor here would be five. Then over here, you'd be left with four m to the power of four. And then 125 divided by five is 25. Okay, so what happens now is that these are now perfect squares. And so what happens is that you're gonna say five, and then you're gonna make two brackets like that. And then the square root of this would be two m to the power of two and 2m to the power of two, and then the square root of 25 is five, and then the one has a plus, and the other one has a negative. Here's our next example. So what we do is we take out a common factor of two, and then you'd be left with four v to the power of four take away one, and then you can now, this becomes a difference of squares, so we're gonna open up our two brackets, put a plus in the one, a negative in the other, and then we're gonna get uh, the square root of this is two v to the power of two and two v to the power of two. And then the square root of one is one. So we just say plus one and negative one. There we go. All right, so with this one, we're definitely gonna have to take out a three first and then you'd be left with k6. Oh, that's interesting, k6, take away 16. So this is a difference of square. You might be thinking, Kevin, what can I, how can I get that? Well, imagine you had a k3 and a k3. Now what is k3 multiplied by k3? Some of you might have just said k9, that's okay. Um, that's a common mistake, but just think about it carefully. When you multiply these together, you're supposed to add the exponents, and that's where we get k6. Ah, so it is actually a different, a, a perfect square. I know you were thinking about nine, weren't you? Yeah, I caught you out. And then four and four, because the square root of 16 is four. Okay, and then put a plus in the one and a negative in the other. And it doesn't matter if you wanna put this one as a negative and this one as a positive, as long as you have the two different signs, then you're good. Here's our next one. Okay, so this one is straight, um, we can go straight into it because there's no common factor here. So what is the square root of that? Well, that would be x3 and x3. And then the square root of this would be uh, five times five. There we go, and then put the plus in the one and a negative in the other. And here's our last example for this lesson. So we definitely need to take out a common factor. Um, I think we can go with two, yeah, that's gonna work. And then you're gonna be left with 25a to the power of six over here, and this one you'd be left with nine. So now each of those are perfect squares, so we're gonna make two brackets. Now the square root of this is gonna be 5a to the power of three, and five a to the power of three, and then the square root of nine is three, like that, and then put a plus in the one and a negative in the other.